Hi, and thank you for tuning in today to the Employment Sites Review pre-recorded information session. We are excited that you are joining us and hope that you find this video information session informative. We have three sites that we will be talking about today, and I have the project team from the region of Peel and City of Mississauga, as well as a representative of Smart Centers with us today. We created this video to provide you an update on where we are at with the Employment Sites Review. The focus of the study is to answer the question of whether any of the three Smart Center sites are appropriate locations for housing as part of a mixed-use development. Since March of 2023, when the project kicked off, we have been working on answering that question. We now have some findings and recommendations we would like to share with you. But before we do that, I would like to acknowledge the lands which constitute the present day city of Mississauga as being part of the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat and Wyandat nations. We recognize these peoples and their ancestors as people who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to many global indigenous peoples. And as a municipality, the City of Mississauga is actively working towards reconciliation by confronting our past and our present, providing space for Indigenous peoples within their territory to recognize and uphold their treaty rights and to support Indigenous peoples. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all Indigenous peoples. So in this video, we will be focusing on providing you an overview of why the Employment Sites Review study started. The findings from the Employment Conversion Review, recommendations, and our next steps. At the end of the video, I will provide you with contact information from the project lead should you wish to share your feedback with them. With that, I will now introduce our next two presenters. Christian is a professional planner and has been at the City of Mississauga since 2019. Christian has experienced leading community area policy and zoning bylaw reviews and is the City's project lead for this particular project. Previously, he was a planner with Peel Public Health, where he led an initiative to positively influence the design of communities to promote walkability and healthy design. He holds a Master's of Urban Planning from McGill University. And Roman has over 28 years with the region of Peel. In his most recent position, he is the principal planner with Planning and Development Division. He's worked on growth management aspects of the regional official plan, and he's the project manager on the region side for the Employment Sites Review. He's also a resident of Mississauga. I will now turn it over to Roman to start the first part of our presentation. Take it away, Roman. Thank you, Erin. Um, my name is Roman Kuczynski. I am a project manager on the regional side for this study. I will present you the origins of this project. On April 28, 2022, Regional Council adopted the regional official plan that was developed through the municipal comprehensive review process. The plan was subsequently approved with modifications by the province on November 4, 2022. The plan designates the employment areas across the region and includes specific policies related to protection of these areas, as well as sets up detailed criteria for the conversions of these areas to non-employment uses. The three smart center sites studied here were originally analyzed for potential conversions during the regional municipal comprehensive review process, but were not recommended for conversions. However, regional council directed staff to consider these sites for potential conversions through further analysis to be under, undertaken in collaboration with the City of Mississauga staff. Regional Council also 
recognize the local municipal leading role in public engagement and land use compatibility studies. We are required to report back to Regional Council on the findings of this study by the end of this year. Next slide, please. Employment areas are designated in official plan for cluster of business and economic activities, including manufacturing, warehousing, offices, as well as associated retail and supporting facilities. Employment areas provide land for diverse employment uses to meet current and future needs. They do not permit uses that are considered sensitive, such as residential or schools. On the other hand, we have non-employment areas, also called community areas. Potential list of land uses in community areas is different than in employment areas. They mostly include residential uses, but can also include schools, daycares, community spaces, as well as health, commercial, retail, and office facilities. And they can also be mixed on a site or even within the same building. By removing a site from an employment area, sensitive land uses become an option for the future development. We are assessing whether the three smart center sites are more appropriately to be parts of community areas. They are currently in the employment areas, but contain uses that could be integrated as a part of future mixed use development. Thank you, and I'm turning right now to Christian for continuation of our presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Aaron, uh, thank you, Roman, for introducing the project, and thank you to everyone who is tuning in here today uh, to hear more about the employment sites review. Uh, my name is Christian Bennett, and I'm a planner with the City of Mississauga, helping to lead uh, this project. Now, the focus of this study is to answer the question of whether any of three of Smart Center sites are appropriate locations for housing in addition to a broader mix of uses. Since March of 2023, we have been engaged with the community and working on answering that question. We've received a lot of valuable feedback since then, and we are now at the stage where we can share some of our findings and draft recommendations with you. Now, before we delve into the question, I would like to begin by introducing the three sites. Here on the slide in front of you, you can see the general location of each of the three sites. The first site is located in the northwest quadrant of the city, near the Lisgar GO station, in an area we call the Meadowvale Business Park Corporate Center. Uh, sites two and three are located along Burnham Thorpe Road West, with site two close to the Arendelle GO station and site three next to Mavis Road. Now again, all three sites are currently in employment areas and they contain commercial uses such as office and small scale retail. Now as Mississauga grows, there may be sites that can be better utilized with either land uses than they were originally intended. Uh, there are policy documents that set out how to consider changes to land use. And through this review, we needed to address criteria that have been established by policies and the plans of the province, uh, the region, and the city of Mississauga. We also needed, of course, to consider input from the community and industry. Now to answer this, the question of whether uh, any of the three sites are appropriate locations for housing as part of a broader mix of uses, we needed to ask a series of follow-up questions. And examples include, uh, what are the potential impacts to surrounding industries and manufacturers if residential uses are introduced closer to their properties? Uh, what, is, 
the current situation with these sites? And do they have a high vacancy rate or do they have uses that are important for surrounding businesses and the community? Is there a need for the conversion or should the site continue with a broader range of employment uses? And what are the overall impacts of introducing new uses on infrastructure and services in the area, such as roads, schools and parks? We also needed to have conversations with the surrounding community and industry to better understand the role that existing uses play in their lives and what they see as important for the future of each site. In April of this year, we held meetings with the community and industry where we introduced these questions and sought feedback. Since then, we have completed a land use compatibility analysis, uh, an infrastructure analysis, and a market analysis. And we have continued to receive valued feedback from the community. For the land use compatibility analysis piece, we engaged a technical expert in the field, uh, GHD Limited, to help conduct the analysis. We are now ready to share with you our findings and draft recommendations. So now let's spend some time going over the findings from our review. Uh, so starting with site one, the consultants found that sensitive land uses can be demonstrated to be compatible with surrounding industries, subject to more study around noise. We also found that surrounding industry present no significant dust, air quality, odor, and vibration impacts for the site. We found that several infrastructure improvements would be needed, such as new parks and improvements to the transportation network, including new roads, cycling paths, and pedestrian pathways. The market study found that Meadowvale Business Park has demonstrated health based on strong employment growth supported by stable growth of businesses. The area has also been identified as a key knowledge intensive district with a concentration of key sectors, specifically the life sciences and finance sectors. Moving on to site two, the consultant found that the proposed development can be compatible with surrounding industries, but that further studies were still needed for air quality, noise, vibration, dust, and odor. There are several nearby businesses, such as a concrete facility and a steel fabricator to be mindful of when considering the introduction of sensitive land uses on the site. The infrastructure capacity review found that there was a need uh, for a new school in the city center area to service a growing population. Other types of infrastructure improvements were also necessary, such as improved park network and new or expanded roads. And finally, the market study for Mavis Arendale uh, employment area showed that it had demonstrated health based on strong employment growth. Now, finally, with site three, uh, the consultant found that there were several concerns with introducing sensitive land uses, given the proximity of the site to surrounding industry. The consultant also found that the development of sensitive land uses on the site may impact the ability of surrounding industries to satisfy their environmental compliance obligations, which could pose a risk to their future viability. We found that as with site two, there would be a need for a new school in the city center area, along with other infrastructure improvements should residential and other sensitive land uses be introduced on the site. We would now like to take this opportunity to share some of what was heard throughout our consultation process. As you can see, there was a range of comments received during the first two community engagements, um, as well as our industry-focused engagement session. We heard concerns for and about affordable housing, uh, the impact of removing uh, existing retail that the communi community relies on. And we also heard from some of you that you were in support of the redevelopment of these sites to create a more vibrant uh, community. In addition, we heard specific concerns from industry 
around the introduction of sensitive land uses on sites two and three. We would like to now share our draft recommendations based on all of the findings from our work to date. Now we would like to emphasize that these are draft recommendations and they still need to be considered by city and regional councils. So let's begin uh, with site one. For site one, we are recommending conversion. We are recommending that should the site be approved for a broader mix of uses, a master planning process be undertaken that addresses many of the comments and feedback that we have heard from you. This process would include, of course, an opportunity for public input and feedback. A master planning process would address the need for full replacement of all commercial gross floor area, uh, the need for job services and retail that are so important for the community, an infrastructure delivery and phasing strategy with new parks and open spaces, new roads, pedestrian pathways and cycling facilities, and a range of housing options by tenure type and affordability. Based on the findings of the land use compatibility study, we are also recommending that further noise analysis be completed. For site two, we are recommending a partial conversion of the site. As we mentioned previously, no planning work will start on this site before city and regional councils have weighed in on the recommendations. You may remember that as part of the findings for site two, there are several nearby businesses that warrant further study before sensitive land uses should be introduced on the site. And that is why we are recommending a partial conversion of the Western portion that is furthest away from those nearby industries. As with site one, we are recommending that a further policy review, which is a more condensed or scoped version of the master planning process be undertaken should the partial conversion go ahead with opportunity for public feedback and input. Now this process would again address the need for full replacement of commercial gross floor area, uh, the need for job services and retail, an infrastructure delivery and phasing strategy and a range of housing options by tenure type and affordability. Finally, for site three, we are not recommending conversion given the findings of this review, including the land use compatibility study. We wanna be open and transparent with you. Um, and at this stage, we recognize that we don't have all the answers. And there is, of course, still more planning work that is needed. As you can see from the timeline, the process does not end here. For the first two phases, the city and the region began working together on this project. During phase one, we developed a study approach and process to evaluate the three sites. And we also began engagement by introducing the project to the public. During phase two, we undertook an in-depth evaluation of each of the three sites. We are currently in this phase and are now presenting the findings and draft recommendations as part of a second round of engagement. Moving forward for phase three, further re refinement of the recommendations may occur based on feedback that you provide. We will then present our recommendations to City Council for consideration by Mississauga councillors before forwarding them to the region. Regional staff will then present their recommendations on next steps to Regional Council. Now, phase three represents the end of this review, but should City and Regional Councils approve conversion and partial conversion of sites one and two, Subsequent phases of work will be undertaken with opportunity for you to provide your feedback and input. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron to explain how you can stay informed and share your feedback through this process. Thank you, Christian. And thank you everyone for continuing to listen to their presentation today. If after seeing Christian's presentation, you have any feedback, you can provide it through the website as you can see the link up above here at yoursaymississauga.esr. Or 
You can also email or call Christian at the information posted on the screen here. His phone number is 905-615-3200, extension 5753. Before we wrap up today, I would like to introduce you to Victoria from Smart Centers, who will be sharing a few updates with you. We'll have her contact information on the screen, and if you have any questions regarding the information she has shared, please contact her directly. Victoria, on to you. Thanks, Erin, and hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today. My name is Victoria McCrum, and I'm a development manager with Smart Centers. Uh, so thanks, Aaron, for hosting and to Roman and Christian for your presentations uh, and for giving a few moments to speak on Smart Center's behalf. So at our last meeting, we asked the public how these sites can best serve the community. While there was lots of great input, two big takeaways we had was that there was concern around the, the timing of these developments and that the retail was going to disappear. Uh, I remind everyone that we're not here with a development proposal, but we're here to continue the conversation with the community, the city and the region about how these sites can evolve to serve their neighbors for many years to come. Today, we heard the city's recommendations, and I'd like to acknowledge that this is just the beginning of a process, which will unfold over many years before construction can even be considered and that there will be many more opportunities to engage with both us, the landowner, and the city throughout this process. The conversation doesn't end here. We know that all three of these sites serve very important retail needs of the community within which they're located. We're not here today to eliminate the retail, but only to improve the conditions for retail to continue to operate. In order for that to happen, we need to future-proof the site and bring a more diverse range of uses and users to support the retail, be that more employment uses like office, community spaces, or residential uses. However, all three of these sites are designated employment and those types of uses are not permitted. But for those of you who have been to the sites know, these are not your typical employment sites. There's no heavy industrial or warehouses or even office. They are retail sites and they serve a community function. We want to build on that. And the first step is this one, seeking approval for conversions of the sites from employment to community uses. So we know that the, reach, uh, that the nature of retail and planning for it is changing. As cities evolve, we see more and more the mixing of uses and the creation of complete communities. And that means bringing places to live, work, and play in proximity to transit infrastructure. We also know that these sites are not operating at their highest and best use. There is transit at the doorstep and large half parked parking lots. That area can respond to new needs of the community, such as housing, parkland, community spaces, or even new jobs. Smart Centers has been part of this community for over 20 years. We're known for delivering retail within the communities where we operate, and we want to continue to do so. We are evolving as a company from offering shopping centers to developing complete communities with a diverse range of uses so we can continue to serve the needs of the neighborhoods we're part of. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we at Smart Centers look forward to continuing the conversation with both the public and staff on the future of these three sites. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. And thank you everyone today for participating and taking interest and time out to listen to the presentation. Again, as we've stated before, please feel free to reach out to city staff or the region and Smart Centers, if you have any thoughts or questions about what was presented today, we are happy to take your call. If you're interested in keeping up with the project, please make sure to, to subscribe on the project website that you can see at the bottom of the project page. Thank you again and have a great day.